Vital Knowledge founder Adam Crisofulli. Adam, um, in a way, uh, these records, strong day for major averages. If you had told me uh, a couple of years ago this would happen with a bad day for Apple, down 4%, I'd have been surprised. New market leadership here? You know, it's been impressive. You, you've seen the market absorb underperformance in, in Apple and other kind of major tech stocks, um, and you've seen the kind of the rally baton get handed to other groups. So it's certainly encouraging the equal weight S&P and the Russell both were big outperformers with the NASDAQ and, and the, uh, the capitalization S&P. So, yeah, very encouraging that you could absorb that type of a pullback in, in Apple. And Google also was, uh, was pretty soft today. And you saw, you know, a lot of the big cyclical groups, financial, semiconductors, capital goods, all traded very well. Um, you know, you had dovish monetary policy. You had another big AI data point with Micron. Um, and you had some pretty encouraging economic data out of the U.S. this morning as well. So all those factors helped propel equities uh, higher today. You chalk this up, too, to a post-Fed afterglow? Yeah, I think that's definitely a big part. You know, the Fed's decision was more dovish than anticipated. You know, I think on an absolute basis, it wasn't extremely dovish, but there was a lot of concern that they would dial back their rate cut guidance from 75 to 50 basis points. They did not do that. Um, you know, Powell was somewhat dismissive of the hot inflation figures we got in January and February. You know, we talked about how we were, were uh, on the cusp of slowing the pace of uh, balance sheet shrinkage. So... Certainly dovish for the Fed, but you also had today a surprise SMB rate cut, Swiss National Bank cut rates unexpectedly, and then the BOE decision also. They left rates unchanged, but their forward guidance, the vote of the uh, BOE members was dovish also. So it wasn't just the Fed. You also had momentum out of Europe, too, for the dovish monetary pivot that is happening globally. Yeah, it's like you took the question right out of my mouth, and, and, and that was the fact that it's not just the Fed that is – starting to pivot and starting to get easier in terms of that monetary policy picture uh, when you look around the world. And certainly we saw that play out in the FX markets as well. The fact that you are seeing industrials at a record high, materials trading at a record high, some of these more cyclical uh, parts of the market, how does it speak to where we are in the economic cycle and thus how that's translating to the market as we did have another day with, let's face it, strong economic growth data? Yeah, the, the data was encouraging this morning, you, and you are seeing, um, you know, some green shoots on the manufacturing and the industrial front. Uh, on the flip side, I think you're seeing a number of red flags when it comes to the consumer and retail. You know, Micron was terrific, but you also had Darden restaurants today. You had um, Academy Sports with ASO, which is a uh, relatively small cap sports retailer. Um, you know, retail sales, recent February retail sales report was soft. So you're seeing consumer red flags um, and in some industrial green shoots. So there's kind of a bifurcation in the data and news flow that we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. So how much do FedEx, to Lululemon, to Nike, these names that we get after the bell that are also reads, not just on their own companies, but the global economy going to matter here in terms of this market narrative continuing? Yeah, I mean, they, these, are, these are huge global multinational companies, especially FedEx and Nike. So they're going to give us great insight into... Um, you know, a variety of different corners of the economy. Um, you know, we're just a couple of weeks out from the start of the Q1 season. Um, so these are kind of those, some of the last big insights into how corporate America is performing. Um, you know, for FedEx, cost cutting is going to be a big part of the story. They've been very aggressive on the cost front, and that's helped to offset some revenue headwinds. On their last call, they did suggest that they were starting to see some stabilization in demand, uh, in large part because just base effects were getting easier. The year-on-year -year comparisons were getting easier. So it'll be interesting to kind of hear their latest commentary on that. Uh, and then for Nike, you know, part of it is, is the global macro environment with the consumer, but part of it also is company specific. You know, they're certainly losing share in certain categories. Uh, you know, China has been an area of softness for them too. So it's certainly going to get some interesting insight from all these companies.